Every weekend I visited my ex who's in jail. Now my husband found out and filed for divorce. How could I have been so stupid? I knew he was going to find out and I still kept going. Now I'm reaping the consequences of my actions. I was married to him, yet I still went to visit my ex in jail. I betrayed my husband and when he found out he was devastated and filed for divorce. It's not my fault entirely though, I tried to stop the visits but I couldn't. I was hooked and my ex had something over me that would have warranted in me losing my marriage so it was either visit him every weekend or lose my marriage. I lost my marriage in the end because I wasn't cautious enough, so there was no point to it all. My husband couldn't believe I had gone behind his back to visit my ex in jail, but in truth he had partially pushed me too. He wasn't the complete reason I had started visiting my ex, but he had been part of the reason. It was because of him I had started hanging out with my old clique and then my ex got word of it and sent for me with a threat over my head. I had wanted to please my husband and had gone and ended the little bit of sanity I had left because when my husband found out, he didn't spare any expense in making sure I would regret my actions. He didn't even think of the fact that I had a child, and I regretted my actions. Now I have nothing. My name is Penny and I'm 28 years old. My husband's name is Oliver and he's 30 years old. I met my husband five years ago and have been married to him for four years with one son. I had just graduated from college and had a fight with my boyfriend, my ex so I had gone to the bar to celebrate my graduation because I had no family. My adoption family had put me through college and in my final year wanted nothing more to do with me. The ones I had left were the ones we grew up together in the foster home and I didn't want to have anything to do with them anyway. We had parted ways as we had left the foster home. My other friends and I, but definitely not my boyfriend. This may seem complicated trying to understand the relationships, you see, my boyfriend then and my ex now were from my foster home and when I had cut off the rest of the people I knew from my foster home. He had been there for me until I saw him cheating with a hoe on my graduation and I couldn't take the pain so I went to drink. That's when I found my husband. I guess everything was all fate. Fate brought a good man into my life but I was too stupid and lost him in the end. Yes, sir. I broke up with my boyfriend and then started seeing my husband. He brought out the fun side of me and always provided everything. Our love wasn't toxic like all I had known since growing up in the foster home. I loved that, but I betrayed my husband. He proposed a year later after meeting him and I got married to him in a small wedding with just his family and friends. I had lied and told him I didn't have any family, which in truth I didn't. Our wedding was just intimate and I loved everything about it. He took me on our honeymoon and spoiled me silly. But then like a rat to a piper, I followed when my ex somehow managed to get my number. I was a sucker for mess-ups and toxicity, I know. While on my honeymoon, I ran into my ex and I slept with him. Don't judge me because we all do stupid things okay. I slept with my ex while I was already married and the child my husband thought was his wasn't. When I found out I was pregnant, I had thought my husband would see through my face and find that the child wasn't his. But he didn't do that. He was excited when I told him I was pregnant. I couldn't bring it to him that the child wasn't his. Do you know how devastated he would have been? And then I had just found my family. I wasn't willing to let that go. My husband was ignorant and I told myself that everything was going to be fine because it was. Of course I was wrong and stupid. Everything didn't end up fine on my end. I gave birth nine months later to a boy and my husband still thought the child was his. Two years later I was happy, my son was happy, my husband was happy, then disaster struck. Apparently my ex found out that the child was his. I had no idea how he found out or that he was still even keeping tabs on me. I had forgotten all about him and everything was fine and my picture-perfect life that I had dreamed up in the foster home I was living was finally coming through. Then he had to just come and ruin it, ruin everything that I had worked so hard to hide and cover up. Can you imagine the audacity of that cad? He even sent for me like I was his street rat. Like all those times we would go pickpocketing and he would hold a meeting where we would have to hand over our stash to him. It was crazy. My ex sent for me when he found out that my child was half his. This was before he got sent to jail. He had called and I had answered like someone who had been hypnotized. And do you want to know what this man wanted? He wanted me to leave my husband or he was going to expose me. I thought karma had finally caught up to me for making my husband take care of a child that wasn't his. I thought this time I was going to finally get what I deserved because nothing good came for people like me. I had nothing going on for me. No money, no job. If my husband was to kick me out with my child, I would have to go back to the toxic man that had landed me in the situation in the first place. But then I had a breakthrough. My ex was arrested during a drug bust. I knew because the dimwit had the same audacity to send me a letter from prison and ask me to visit him with his child. 
I didn't heed that message and left it alone. I lived my life happily for a year before everything crumbled down for good, and my husband found out about my secret. Everything was perfect that year. My husband had given me some money to start up something or just spend on whatever I wanted, but he was going to keep giving me more. I decided to keep the money aside while I thought about what I was going to do with it. He took care of Willie, our son, like his own. No good thing lasts, though. I hope you all know that. A year later, after my ex was busted, I received another letter that if I didn't come to visit him in jail, I was going to receive the consequences of my actions. I had ignored that. The next day, I came home to find my son's room had been vandalized, and on his wall, there were paternity tests proving my ex to be my child's father pinned everywhere on the wall. I got so scared, but I couldn't even tell my husband or the police because that was another problem. I removed the papers myself and burned them. Luckily, my husband had traveled for a work trip that weekend. So I took my son to go and see my ex, his real father. That was how I started visiting my ex in jail. I had never planned to do that or make my husband find out that I was doing something wrong behind his back, but I didn't have a choice. And don't say I had a choice to tell from the beginning in the comments. If you had been in my shoes, you would understand the things at stake. My ex was threatening me with blackmail that he was going to tell my husband if I stopped visiting him. I couldn't let him do that, so it was sneak out to visit my ex every weekend rather than my husband finding out that the basis of our marriage was a lie. Willie wasn't exactly the base of my marriage with my husband, but sometimes I wondered if my husband would have let go of me if the child hadn't been in the mix. I had always wondered. Sure, he treated me well during the early stages of our marriage, but the months leading up to our divorce, he had become distant. He hadn't found out about what I was doing then. I was so sure because my husband was a very expressive man. If he didn't like something, he was going to say it, or you could read it in his face. It was like he just wanted to spend one with Willie more than he wanted to be in my presence. I had just chalked it up to work because I didn't have time for it. I had more pressing issues like my ex breathing down on my neck to worry about what was going on with my husband. My ex was turning into a menace little by little. I was already struggling to get out of the house every weekend to go and see him only for the doofus to brag about how he had power over me and could ruin my life anytime he wanted to. I had to lie to my husband almost every weekend that I was job searching, and they were always fixing their interviews on the weekends. He had wondered what type of companies were hiring on weekends and not weekdays. I had to lie again that it was people looking to hire caterers and cooks that were interviewing on the weekends. He didn't believe me, but at least he had left me to do my thing as far as I got back a job. He didn't know I was going to visit someone who deserved to rot in jail for eternity, but that same person was back in my life, and I couldn't ignore the person or he would definitely expose me to my husband. I lied every weekend, and when all my ex did was brag, I stopped going again and almost landed in trouble. My husband came home and said that he got a text saying I had something I was lying to him about. You all, I had never been more scared in my life. My heart went to my throat when he prodded me to tell him what I was hiding. I had to tell him it was a prank, and I had been the one to prank him because I had a surprise for him. I narrowly escaped that situation by telling him the thing I was hiding from him was that I had finally gotten a job. It was so close, I thought for sure that was the day I was going to be caught. But luckily it wasn't. So I had to continue visiting my ex. I went back the next weekend and he demanded I bring his son the next time I was coming. At this point, keeping the secret from my husband was seriously weighing me down, but I had no other choice. I visited my ex in jail with his baby and begged him that I couldn't be coming in every weekend to see him, that it would raise suspicion. The bastard agreed to my surprise and said since he was in prison, it was good that my husband was taking care of his son till he, my ex, got out. I was so happy and thought that was going to be the end of it, that I wasn't going to have to see that MF again. I thought for certain I was finally free. I was wrong once again. My ex didn't contact me for another three weeks and when he did again, it came with blackmail. No, not the usual blackmail and F threatening to expose me to my husband. This was monetary blackmail. If I didn't give him the sum of $5,000 by the weekend, he was going to kidnap my son and then expose me to my husband. You don't have to tell me how all this would have been avoided if I had just come clean. I know. It was my reality. I lived it. Anyway, I was so scared and panicked when my ex sent the message. Then I remembered I had money stored to a way that I was meant to use to start up something. The total amount of money he was asking for was the exact money I had received from my husband, so I had transferred everything into the account my ex had written out. Desperate times called for desperate measures, so I was broke. And I had lied to my husband about finally working, so I wasn't expecting any money from him. I didn't have any money to even think about running away from it all. Trust me, I had thought about it once, but I couldn't. 
Then my bastard of an ex started demanding I began visiting him again in jail. I was so naive to think after the first money I had paid him off, he would leave me alone. Wishful thinking, lol. Apparently my ex found out my husband was well-to-do and wanted me to get my hands on my husband's money, his property, anything. He told me if I did that he was going to leave me alone and forget all about our little run-ins and like a fool I believed him. Redditors, you need to understand I was being heavily blackmailed and didn't have any other options in my book. I either did his bidding or get kicked out of my husband's house. I eventually got kicked out, but at that moment I was looking for the best option. And the best option was doing my ex's bidding. So I had to get my hands on my husband's property. Easy, right? Yeah, it wasn't so easy. Recall when I said my husband began to resent me by our fourth year of marriage? Well, not resent me in particular, but I felt like he didn't like me anymore. I confronted him about it, and he had just said he had too much going on at work. That was why it seemed like though he was aloof. My husband could spend days in the office and only come back once before disappearing again. So I had followed him to the office one time and found out what exactly was going on. My husband was seeing another woman. Well, that was what it looked like when I had confronted them at his office, but then it wasn't what I thought it was. My husband wasn't seeing another woman. My husband had found that I had people I actually knew around. I had told him I didn't have anyone when we began seeing each other, and he had ran into one of my foster sisters, Leah, when she had come to apply for a job at his company. She was part of the people I had cut off, and the fact that I had lied that I didn't have any family even adopted was what had made my husband distant from me. Can you believe that? Why hadn't he just come to me to ask me about it or something? He had to go and start interrogating one of those scamming liars behind my back. This was another problem for me. She brought about another problem for me. I had to figure out how to get my husband's property from my ex so he could keep my secret, and I had to also figure out how to keep Leah's claws off my husband and get my husband to trust me again. Anyway, Leah knew why I had cut her off in the first place because she'd had my ex's D asterisk sea cake down her throat before, and I had caught her, and by some cruel twist of fate she wanted to come after my husband? Yeah, that wasn't going to work. For formality's sake, I reconciled with Leah in front of my husband, but I knew what she was. My husband was super excited because he didn't know anyone that knew me and knew how I had grown up and that kind of thing, so he invited Leah to stay over at our house because the lying witch told him she was in between jobs and didn't have any place to stay. So that's how Leah started staying at my place. In addition to this problem, I still had to be visiting my ex every weekend until I got him the papers he wanted. My life was far from palatable at the moment. I apologized to my husband and began doing everything in my power to get him to sign over one of his properties in my name. I really needed to get my ex off my neck before dealing with Leah. I took my husband on dates, with his money of course, I was broke. I bought him nice things, also his money. He just thought it was mine. I seduced him and made sure things in the bedroom was big and spicy. Nothing worked. No. My ex was getting impatient and Leah was getting on my nerves. I caught her once lurking outside my husband's bedroom and she claimed to be looking for where the laundry room was. This was someone that had been in my house for two weeks and she didn't know where the laundry room was. I warned her to steer clear of my man and did you know what this witch decided to do? She decided to bring up my past love life during dinner with my husband. I swear if I could have strangled her without the police raising questions about her missing body, I would have. She wanted to out me. I knew what she was trying to do because I had warned her to stay away from my husband or I would kick her out. So she was trying to get on my husband's good side by telling him information about me. Leah told my husband about my ex and I and how we had been close and inseparable back in the day. That she had actually thought I would have ended up married to my ex and not my husband. All these had been information that no one asked for but Leah was freely giving it up like the attention-seeking clown she was. My husband was asking questions and Leah was describing my ex. The whole dining conversation had been too tedious and I barely touched my food. But I had gotten the information that she had passed. Leah was trying to tell me that if I did anything to her, she would expose me in front of my husband. So it meant she knew I had been going to visit my ex. I had suspected. I mean, I had a cunny snake living with me. How hadn't I seen it? There was one time I had gotten home late from the prison visit and found out Leah wasn't home. She'd come back to the house about an hour later and the smile she had given me was one that said, I know all your secrets, so stop trying to hide. I had passed it off as nothing but the dinner confirmed my suspicions. This meant I had to get rid of Leah. I couldn't stand too many people knowing my secret, and the only way to get rid of her was to make my husband hate her. I decided to frame Leah. That was the only way. I began with framing her for the little things. My husband's missing watch, missing money. 
Then when my husband complained about his things missing, I blamed it on Leah. Sure, I was a bad person, but I was looking out for myself and having Leah around wasn't in my best interest, so I had to make her leave. Besides, would you all like to have something that could be a threat to your marriage still stay on just because you didn't want to be a bad person? Well, we all did bad things, and I'm probably sure what I did wasn't even the worst of bad things in the world. Leah, for one, had had my ex's tool down her throat and wanted my husband's piece of meat. What did that make her? Well, I told my husband that Leah couldn't be trusted because she came from the foster home and she was the worst pickpocket of all. I didn't lie about that because I didn't have to. Leah was truly the foster kid with the most crimes and stealing. She got sent out of the homes that had adopted her because she kept stealing from them. And the reason she stole was just so stupid. She liked material things. My husband didn't believe me because he claimed that I was from the same foster home as Leah, and I had turned out all right, so it meant Leah had grown past her evil ways. I had thought my husband was the most gullible and most naive person on earth at that moment. Lol, he wasn't even close to gullible. I was the naive and stupid one. Well, my husband didn't want to believe Leah was evil and kick her out of our house, so I had to resort to more serious means. Fortunately, this also coincided with the time my ex was getting restless in prison and decided to spice up my life a little from jail. He told me that he needed a show-off proof that I was still in on the plan or he was going to direct the paternity test results straight to my husband's mail. I hadn't even known how he had gotten evidence to conduct those tests, but he had them, and that meant he had the upper hand. My ex demanded I give him $10,000 to sort out things or hand over one of my husband's property, or risk my husband finding out that I was a fraud. I couldn't do the latter, so I had to give him the money. I also couldn't borrow $10,000 from my husband without it looking suspicious. So Leah became my scapegoat. It was the perfect opportunity to make her leave my life. My husband had a safe where he kept some money in the house. He didn't know I knew he had a safe, and he didn't also know I knew how to unlock it. I never wanted to resort to that, but I didn't have any choice. My neck was on the line of fire. I took the $5,000 and deposited it into my ex's account. My husband was livid when he noticed the missing money, and I framed Leah. Everything was working out as planned because it seemed as if Leah also seemed to have run into something so she didn't come over to our house, which made her look more suspicious. In fact, I didn't see Leah again and didn't hear from her until disaster struck. It seemed like she was in talks with my husband after the missing money, but I know she had a hand in ruining my life. I'll get to this. Hello, you could never stand to see me happy, could you, Leah? I handed over the money to my ex and he got off my back for a bit, but he still insisted I visit him at the prison every weekend. I kept to it. I shamefully kept to it. My husband thought I was going for catering events every weekend, so my cover was perfect. I didn't see any need to be careful or that I was being watched. I didn't think I was going to be caught going to visit my ex in jail. Besides, my husband became cool after his missing $10,000. It was like he completely forgot about it, and he didn't seem distant at all. It was like everything was back to normal, but it was just the calm before the storm. There was no way I would have known because I didn't see the need to be careful. I should have seen it. I should have seen it when my husband said we should go visit the prison as a way to give back to society. I hadn't seen anything in it because he had first said we should go visit the foster homes before the prison. So I had just thugs was in a giving spirit even though he had never done this before. But before this, he got me a property. The very thing to my freedom. It was my birthday. He had taken me out to celebrate and bought me nice things and I was so sad for all the lies I had built in our marriage. We went dancing and for a while I forgot that I had a blackmailer in form of an ex on my neck and I just danced with my husband. Who knew it would be the last time I would be doing that? My husband took me out for ice cream before we called it a night. When I had gotten home, the papers to two condos had been on our dining table. I was so happy because I thought that I was going to finally breathe for the first time in months. I had been disturbing him to do something big for my birthday so I was either guessing he was going to get me a car or something fancy. I didn't know he would actually pay attention to me and give me the property I had been asking for. It was everything. After my birthday, I paid low for three weeks and doted on my husband to show him how much I appreciated him for freeing me from the shackles of my ex, although he didn't know that then. I had almost come to a tail's end over what I was going to do if I couldn't get what my ex wanted, and I got my breakthrough. After the whole excitement of my birthday had died down, I went to visit my ex in prison and I signed over the properties to him in exchange for my secret dying with him and him leaving me alone. The F asterisk 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 off sign I had given him as I handed him the papers and left was implanted in my memory because I remember how crude his smile had been there. I should have seen the signs. They had been so clear and I had been as blind as a bat in daylight. 
I thought that was going to be all, and for a while it was. Then the worst happened. No. My ex came back, but this time he had been released from jail. I hadn't even been allowed up to three months breathing space before everything I had done came back to haunt me all over again. You see, I didn't know my husband had found me out in my own game. Yep, he had known what I was up to, and it had been since I had framed Leah for the missing money. The visit to the prison had been to tell me he knew what I was up to, but I had been too narrow-minded to think. I had been too wrapped up in trying to cover up my own problems to see the signs. Yep, my stupidity knew no bounds. Everything came to play when my ex showed up to my house one day when my husband wasn't home and he just walked in like he was home. Apparently, he had just decided to stop by and drop a message since he was free. He wanted to see the kind of place his son was living in and if it were conducive enough. That should have raised my warning bells. And it did, but it raised it for the wrong thing. My only thought was that my husband was going to come back any moment and find the bastard lounging around the house like it was his. I told him to get out, and the only way he would agree to go was if I agreed to see him later that weekend, then he would be gone for good. I did a terrible thing. I know I did a terrible thing and I don't need to be told. I made another mistake. Like a rat following the flute of the piper, I was led to my doom. I agreed to go and see my ex at the hotel where he had been staying and I did a terrible thing. I had a momentary lapse in judgment. I was attracted to the toxic ones and it ruined my life. Know everything I had done that led up to the moment of F going to see my ex at his hotel had been what ruined my life. But this was the cherry on the cake. This was like the wind to deck of cards. The thing to make it all fall apart. Forget that I'm being so poetic. I don't know how else to describe the foolish decision I took by going to see my ex in the first place. I slept with my ex and that was how my husband caught me. I told you I made a foolish decision. I slept with the very man that had made my life terrible from the moment our paths crossed as I got married. I got into bed with him and my husband opened the door not looking too shocked to see what I had done. That point in my life I had been rooted to the bed like a deer in headlights. I had been caught. My whole life was up. My ex had just stood up and shook his head like it had been planned from the beginning. It was he shook hands with my husband and took a bag from the chair and left the hotel room that I realized it had actually all been planned. I asked my husband how long he had been planning this and he had said ever since he got in contact with Leah and she told him she didn't steal the money. Then the witch went ahead to tell him, my husband, to look into me and my ex and that I was going to see him on the weekends and not actually working with a catering company. He had thought everything was a lie, so he had followed me one weekend and found it to be true. Then he had confronted my ex, who then told him how the child under his roof wasn't even his. My ex had then told him how he had blackmailed me to give him $5,000 first, and then $10,000 and I had given him. My ex had also told him about the property I had planned to sign off to him. My husband then revealed that he had then planned with my ex to get me the property, and then bail my husband out of jail so he could test a theory. My husband even got my ex to sign over parental rights of our son to him. This meant my ex no longer had any claim to my son being his. Then my husband told my ex to arrange this meeting to see if I would run back to him at the slightest chance, and I had done just that. I had proved my ex was right and my husband couldn't look at my face. I couldn't even say anything, I just stayed rooted on the bed and ashamed of myself because everything I had worked for was finally over and outed in the open. I was caught and played. I had been played. As my husband made to leave, I got on my knees to beg him thinking since he was calm, he might forgive me. My husband flung me out of his sight and left the hotel. I pursued him with the hotel's bedsheet wrapped around my midriff. I hadn't even thought about the fact that people would be outside the hotel, and my only thought had been to get my husband back, but I had no one else. All to no avail, my husband got into his car and drove off before I could reach him, and that was when I realized myself but so many people already had their phones out and were recording me. I believe I made the local news. Mad woman chases after husband from a hotel. I got home and found all my things outside the house and the house locked with my husband and son gone. My husband had dropped divorce papers on top of my luggages. I guess he had those earlier on and was just waiting for the right time to use it. With nowhere to stay, I had to rekindle my relationship with one of the foster children from my unit and she allowed me stay at her place. My husband's lawyer invited me to his office two days later asking for the papers. I said I wasn't going to sign it until he let me see my son. I should have just signed the papers and gotten out of my husband's hair. The police showed up to my doorstep three days after my meeting with my husband's lawyer. My husband had me arrested for stealing the sum of $10,000 from him and forging his signature and trying to sell off his property. 
Then as revenge, he told me he was going to drop the charges if I signed the divorce papers and signed it her parental rights of my son to him. Apparently my ex had done that and my husband had given him money for it. I signed the divorce papers and whatever he wanted immediately because I couldn't see myself going to jail like my ex, but my husband didn't drop the charges. I didn't have money to hire a lawyer, so I was given a public attorney and I lost the case and was sentenced to three years in prison with community service since I didn't have bail. But luckily I've mixed in with the wrong crowd before, so I got the money from someone to bail myself out of going to jail. Now I'm on the run from this person because I didn't want to be under their servitude. This was how I learned my lesson. And I hope you learn a thing or two from my experience. If only I had confessed everything from the beginning, I wouldn't be in this mess I have found myself in. I don't know why I let it get this far. Now I'm on the run because I borrowed money from the wrong person. My husband and son will be living their best lives without me in it, and my bastard of an ex that had caused all this was also enjoying his life while I was suffering. Lesson learnt Redditors.